service industry really badly affected here and, and, and more prone to COVID than, than anybody else. So I think I think we definitely got an opportunity to do something about it. When I think about it from a firm perspective, the positive I would say is, if I think about this 10 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, these kind of conversations about a fairer economy and a greener economy and, mm. you know, ESG or they, they were grassroots conversations. They were about, you know, activists in your organisation who were kind of pushing those messages up the way. Mm. And I'm not sure how well they were being heard by, um, by senior employees. Mm. And hasn't that flipped? Because, and okay, I'm sure they've been forced to flip, but it's great that these are now boardroom conversations and I think it's so important that firms make, make this part of their strategy and make it part of their strategy and, and their goals and their measures and, and publish, publish them. Because I, I, am, I genuinely believe, and I was fascinated to listen to your millennials when they spoke, people have got, they've got choices. You know, today's generation have got choices about where they work. And, and now that work can be more flexible, people in, in Glasgow can work for London companies and be at home. Um, so to attract the very best talent, you're gonna to have to take these things seriously and make it part of your, your DNA. Because if it's not part of your DNA and people don't feel it's part of your DNA, they won't work for you. They work for somebody else. So I think, I think it's important as part of the culture but, you know, um, I was on a call just the other day and people were talking about, you know, um, net carbon, you know, carbon zero. And they were saying, I don't know how I'm going to get there. Well, of course you don't. But it doesn't stop you making the commitment and it doesn't stop you, you know, being brave and saying it's what I want to do. I will kind of work out how I'm going to get there. Mm. But I think firms, employees want to see firms be brave. So it's it's a bit about. You know, clearly we want big firms to, we want them to encourage them to have um, social and environmental, you know, sound practices, but we want them to be brave. And I think colleagues want them to be brave. It's funny, I was, silly example, but I was, I was talking to somebody the other day who um, had learned um, jazz piano. So they were apparently classically trained um, and they'd learned jazz piano online in lockdown. And I was thinking, if, if it hadn't been for lockdown, you would have, and somebody had said to you, you know, you can learn jazz piano and I'll, and I'll teach you online, you would have thought that can't be done. It absolutely mm -hmm. can't be done. Mm -hmm. And yet you think differently and it can be done and it has mm -hmm. been done. Mm -hmm. So I think what big firms need to think about is let's just be brave and work mm -hmm. out, um, you know, let's set ourselves the goal and then we'll work out how to get there. Fantastic. Um, we're at 10 past six. We're just a couple more questions from me, Susan, and then I um, would love to hear from, from the audience. So if, if you can be thinking about what, what sort of follow up questions you might want to ask uh, Susan. But if we turn now to our third hour, Susan, I think we'd all recognise the importance of our networks and our relationships as we seek to develop our careers. As we think about this hybrid or remote working model that uh, we, we seem now to be very much entering into how, how would you recommend that people go about developing and strengthening their networks and relationships in that kind of context yeah it's hard isn't it mm -hmm. um i um again I'll, I'll go back to your millennial uh conversation because one of the gentlemen on it said that more than half of his team he had never met them face to face. And that really got me thinking about, um, so I, I've also taken a job, I've taken a new job in lockdown. Mm 